back to Justin's Arcade. Today I just want to make a quick video to show how you would go about installing an LCD in one of these Rush, uh, San Francisco Rush cabinets to replace the CRT. And there's several reasons you might want to do that. Um, there are pros and cons and you know trade-offs to using an LCD versus a CRT. Um, usually on classic arcade machines, I almost always prefer CRTs just because the pixel art is kind of made for that display. Um, you get the scan lines, you kind of get all of that nostalgic um, visual quality that you expect from those arcade games. But with newer 3D games like this, um, personally, I don't mind LCDs. Um, in some cases, I think they look pretty good. Um, so that's what I wanted to have in this cabinet. Um, the main reason I wanted that was because I'm doing a PC conversion on this cabinet, so I can run uh, modern games like Forza or Dirt 6 and you know, get the really nice, high quality, high resolution display, um, but also still have something that can run and emulate the older classic uh, 90s racing games. So if you wanna do that in your cabinet, um, you don't actually don't need a PC conversion. Um, you could do it with real hardware as well. Um, but either way, there's just two steps. Um, you just need to pick an LCD that you wanna use, you wanna mount it in the cabinet, and then the second, more interesting piece of this video is how you can install this piece of plexiglass in here and kind of make it look like um, it came from the factory looking this way. Um, that way, just so users can't uh, touch their fingers up onto the screen when they're playing the game. To get started, let's pull the plastic mold off the front of the cabinet. As you can see, my cabinet has already had the CRT removed when I got it, so there's nothing for me to do there. To remove the plastic mold, you first have to remove two screws that are on the top of the cabinet right behind the marquee. Then you can lower the marquee and remove the three bolts that are holding in the steering wheel and the dashboard in place. After that, it should just slide right out. Uh, be careful that you disconnect the wires that go to the keypad on the right before you remove it completely. All right, so we need to figure out which LCD we're going to use. We know the width of the area we're trying to feel is 22 inches, but LCDs are normally measured by their diagonal screen size. We know the aspect ratio of most LCDs is 16 by 9, so we can calculate the diagonal size using the Pythagorean theorem. So it looks like a 25 inch 16 by 9 LCD will be an almost perfect fit. Thanks Mario! Okie dokie! If you head over to the Suzo Hap website, you can indeed find a 25.5 inch MacVision LCD, which is listed as working with a Rush 2049. This LCD would be ideal if you're running original Rush game hardware, as it will accept the video signal directly without a converter. However, I chose not to go this route for a couple of reasons. First, the resolution is listed as 1360 by 768 which is pretty low considering I'm doing a PC conversion with the intent of playing both older and newer games. Secondly, since it is an open frame LCD panel, I would have to come up with a custom mounting bracket and I would like to avoid having to build one. So instead, I decided to look around for a standard consumer LCD with VESA compatible mounting holes. I ended up with this Dell UltraSharp U2518D, which I found for a pretty decent price on eBay. Um, as an added bonus, this screen has a higher resolution. It is a 1440p screen. As for the mount itself, I went with this LCT100S desk mount by Peerless. The Rush cabinet has a little cubby hole here where you can attach this mount. You just slide it in, tighten the clamp from the bottom, and you're good to go. No need to build a custom mounting bracket. Then back here on the LCD, you can attach the VESA mounting plate, and then it's as simple as sliding the mount onto the pole. All right, so that first part is pretty simple if you're using a VESA mount LCD. Um, the more interesting part of this video is how to install this piece of plexiglass here. Um, the original CRT was, of course, a 4x3 aspect ratio, and modern LCDs are 16x9. So what that means is you're always going to end up with kind of these black areas that are not filled in here. And this piece of plexiglass just keeps people from reaching in the back of the cabinet, and also gives some protection to the LCD screen. Um, the CRT glass was pretty strong, so no one's going to be able to mess with that, but LCDs are pretty fragile and it doesn't take much to crack them. So this kind of gives you some protection if people are kind of getting wild and, and moving around a lot that they, they won't break the screen. Um, what's interesting here is that this blue plastic uh, of the cabinet is molded to fit the shape of the CRT screen, and since the LCD is flat, 
um, we just need to make sure that the plexiglass that we put in here kind of follows that curve. And this is a, uh, to do this, I use a technique I found online. It's, um, I didn't come up with it, but I will leave a link in the description so you can check out the original instructions. Um, there was no video, um, there was just pictures, and I thought it'd be cool to have a video of it. So um, I'll go over the, the pieces you need, basically just some wooden blocks and screws and plexiglass, and then you can get going. So let's go over the parts you're going to need. First, obviously, is a sheet of plexiglass. You need a sheet that's at least 18 by 24 inches. I was able to find this Duraplex brand at Lowe's, which is 18 by 24 by 0.08 inches thick. It's in the glass cutting section, and uh, you don't even have to have them cut it because it's the right size. Next up is some scrap wood. Here's some I had lying around from other house projects. You want something that's no thicker than 3 quarter inch. Um, we're just going to cut these strips into eight blocks, about four to six inches long, and we're going to use them as anchor points for the plexiglass sheet. You'll need two types of screws. The first type are used in order to mount the wooden blocks to the blue plastic, and these are going to be visible from the outside of the cabinet, so you might want to pick something that looks nice. I went with these Hillman number 10 3 quarter inch black finishing screws. You can find them in the automotive department or the screws and bolts section at your local hardware store. And finally, you'll need some more screws to mount the plexiglass sheet to the wood blocks. I like to use these PowerPro 3 quarter inch screws uh, because I find the Torx bit more convenient than the standard Phillips head, but anything will do here since you won't see these. All right, so I'm just gonna measure out eight blocks that are about six, six inches long, cut them, and you'll notice I'm not being accurate at all because these are not going to be seen. They're going to be behind the blue plastic. Once you got those cut, you're going to drill eight holes into the plastic, the top, bottom, left, right, as well as the diagonals. You want to take your time and pre-drill these holes really slowly so you don't risk cracking the plastic. After that, you can screw the blocks onto the corners and sides. And those blocks are where we're going to anchor the plexiglass to. So you want to make sure that they're flush with the blue plastic too far down and it will bend and maybe break the plastic and too far up will leave a gap. Once you've got that, you can pre-drill your holes on the plexiglass. And then use the second set of screws to anchor those to the wood blocks. And that's basically it. You can see from the front that the plexiglass follows the curve. Looks really good. And then you can just peel the backing off and you'll be ready to mount it back on the cabinet. Let's take a look at the LCD from the back here. And you can see here at the bottom, there's a bit of a gap and same thing up on the top. So what you're going to want to do is get some black poster board or photo mat board or something and just kind of tape that up there. That way you can't see through back into the cabinet. Here you can see it at night. You'll notice that uh, black poster board helps block out the light from the marquee area, which is important. And that's basically all there is to it. Using this technique gives you something that really looks like it came straight out of the factory. It looks really nice. And it also looks really great for playing modern games on that 1440p screen. That does it for this video. In the future, I'd like to do another video on this cabinet, basically going over how you can do the PC conversion as well as wire up directly to the original force feedback controls and as well as drive the lighting on the LEDs. So keep an eye out for that in the future. But that's it for now. I'll see you next time.